Hello, this is Marian Penna coming to you from SeemsToBeSo.com. Today I'm going to talk to you about working with your threads in Electric Quilt. I want to first um, say happy anniversary to Electric Quilt. It's 25 years and still going. It's great software and I hope you'll give it a try if you haven't tried it already. The threads area of Electric Quilt is one of the most I think mysterious areas in the software. There's not a lot of information about it on the web that you can really look at. There, there are how-to um, lessons at Electric Quilt's forum and um, their support database and that kind of thing. And when I wrote to Penny about how to do threads in Electric Quilt, while I had read the help file, I had a hard time getting threads to show up on the outlines. I'm hoping I'll be able to show you that today and what happens and what I do to get around it. But um, she told me at the time that I should make sure I'm placing my thread right on that outline. And that does work, but it's not consistently working. In Electric Quilt, by default, your threads are not turned on, except in EQ Stitch, where they are turned on right here. But this is the only place in the software that they are turned on by default. When you're in the block window or in your quilt layout, work, your quilt work table would whatever they want to call it, I guess, you need to go to the screens and turn them on. And you, you, you do that by going to, you can't really see this, I'll move this over so you can see a bit. Your, your menu here, and you click Add Remove Buttons, and it will bring up a menu where you want to take and add all the different ones you want in here. I usually just turn them all on and play with them that way. When I'm in this window, I'm going to want them on again, so I do the same thing here. I want to be able to set borders, set text, do all this fun stuff that I should be able to do anyway. Okay, so now they're all on and I don't have to worry about them anymore. So we're going to work on this a little bit later in the lesson. So don't worry, you'll see it again. As I said, when I normally when you work with thread colors, you're really just doing it to add a thread color to a stencil in electric quilt. And I think that's the main purpose of it. But I started doing it for the outlines on my applique blocks because I wanted to emphasize the outline in the shapes and the patterns. And so I thought I would do a quick lesson on how I work with thread in Electric Quilt. I thought it was going to be quick and I'm hoping it will still be quick. I'm going to try to go through everything as quickly as possible. But I wanted to show you that in Electric Quilt when you're working with threads there's all kinds of fun little things. When you click on your brush thread. There's several different types of threads in Electric Quilt. The first one is the brush threads and it does individual lines. So these were all colored individually. But if I had switched to the spray thread and chosen a color, well let's go with something you'll see. Then when I choose it, it's supposed to choose it's supposed to color every color <laughs> the same color. I'm not supposed to have to do this. That's very strange that it didn't just color them all the same. But you can see here where I'm still even having problems just getting them all switched. 
I think I'm, I'm close to it. When you click exactly on the line, it, it's supposed to change, but it doesn't always do that. You might ask how I got these patterns and such in here. To get these patterns, you want to click on the style and even the weight. The weight makes the, the line show up heavier or thicker, I guess you'd say. And you can choose different types of styles that you want your outline or your stencil to show up as. Now, if you're trying to uh, get trying to get a quilting effect or a hand quilting effect, you'd want to go with the dots or the dashes, which I think I've only gotten here, right here is some dashes. How these work is, let's see if I can get this to work okay. That's a heavier, as you can see, it makes it a, a bigger stitch. If I go to this one, it will make it very heavy. You can switch back and forth, but it doesn't always show up the way it should. Even if I try to switch colors, it just, it just gives me fits. And this is what I'm talking about with when I'm working with outlines. It doesn't matter if it's already colored a thread color. I still have the issue of it not wanting to color the threads like it should. So that's why I thought I would do this lesson and show you how I get around some of these issues. So <clears throat> to, I would encourage you, if you want to play with this, I will send you my PJ7 file. I'll, I'll post this with the lesson today. And it will have these lines that I drew in my applique work table. They're gonna be on the motifs tab. They're not going to be in the blocks. I, I could put them in the blocks also, I guess, but I, I, I'm not sure they'd work real well in the blocks. So I'm just going to have them here in the motifs tab, and that's where you're going to find them. And that's all that's going to be here. I'm sorry, I'm not giving away my patterns, but um, I might leave one in here. We'll see. It depends on how generous I'm feeling today. So. I'd like you to try just working with the threads and electric quilt and seeing what you think. The other thing is, <laughs> I'm sure you probably think it's funny that they all look different now, but here it is where, you know, I was trying to change it to all one color and it took, but I didn't see it taking because you don't always see it. You sometimes have to switch back and forth to see, to see if it's taken. And this happens to me a lot with outlines. I'll be trying to go from a thick outline to a thin outline or a thin to a thick. I don't always see the change. So I have to switch back and forth to get it. There isn't any way to refresh the table other than to switch back and forth from applique to color. Now this is this comes because I when I make my blocks, I almost always, 99%, of the time use patch draw motif. I rarely use easy draw and patch draw and I I never use these two. I I mean if I were going to use any other um, block work table it would be this one so because it has both options and if I were going to draw a pieced block I would almost always be incorporating applique into it so it's very rare because there's so many blocks in electric quilt already and between what they offer on the web and block base and I mean <laughs> I don't think I would ever work with every single block that came in electric quilt and I tend to like the simplistic blocks really easy um, I, I'm not a heavy piecer kind of person it would it would really have to dazzle me to do uh, um, like that medallion star, the, the 18 points or whatever it is. Uh, the most star points I've ever done is eight. So, and that was, that was pretty, that was a lot. And it had those inset seams and I'm, I'm never doing those again. So 
<clears throat> Never. Okay, so let's get to working on a project. I'll be right back with you. Sometimes I have to take a drink of water when I'm in between my um, talking because my mouth gets, my, my throat and my mouth gets so dry. So I'm going to work on this little coffee pot mug. This is my next freebie on my website. And um, no, I don't want to save it. So I have drawn this up and I have colored the fabrics in. Now, sometimes it actually pays to draw your outlines first and then come over here and color them. And that's because you can see what's happening. I don't mean the shape, the whole shape. I just mean the outlines. Like I would draw this one, I would draw this one, I would draw this, this one, this one, and these. And that's because it's actually easier to color them when there's no fabric in there, when there's no other lines, um, outside shape lines to consider. When you have outlines, especially when they touch other outlines, they tend to outline your shape. And when you're trying to keep this really thin shape, it's almost next to impossible. So I'm, just, I'm hoping that some of these little things will show up today. So I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to hope that that will help with showing you in the video. Um, and we'll go from there. Need to have a, a kind of a light brown, maybe a tan. We'll see what happens. I don't want to go really thick here. I'm thinking maybe I will just try normal and see what happens. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I don't want to emphasize it too much, but at the same time, I don't want to, um, I don't want it lost like that would do either. So these, these are the ones I expected to actually have problems with because they touch on down in to the other line. They cross the line, in other words. And I expected to have a problem. They also touch up here. And that's usually where I, when I'm doing thread outlining, when I'm coloring my outlines, that's where I usually have issues. So next I want to work on these two little eyebrows. Maybe it just figures that because I'm doing a lesson on them, it may not want to work properly. I don't know. So with this one, I'm going to turn my weight on and see what happens. As I still have it's still going to do a straight line for me. I don't think it will show up. Well, well, it does kind of show up, but let's try the style and see. I want it to show up just a little bit more. And it see it's not really doing it for me. Let's see what happens when I come over here. No. No. Let's come down here. Let's try a heavier line. I, I don't want to get too heavy, but sometimes you almost have to go heavy just to see if it's working. Okay, so this is cool because these are not working for me. So, <laughs> not that I don't want them to not work, but they just are not going to do their job and work for me today, which is not fun. So this is how I get around this. Sometimes when I do this, I will just take and I will pull them out, you know, because I'm not usually too worried. And if I, if I need to, I can put the picture back in here to see where they went exactly. But these are eyebrows, so they're obviously going to go above the eyes, you know. So I'm going to see if I can't just color them this way and get them to work outside of the area. So this is one of my solutions, and this is the one I usually try first. Now I have this on pretty heavy weight. It should be showing up. I should be able to see it much better than I am. Let's see if it will do it here. Yeah, that will work up. And that's just too thick for me, so I want to go back to this. I may not see it real easily because I do have it zoomed in. 
and that does not always help. But see, it does go back. So that works out. It looks like it probably worked the first time around, but I just wasn't seeing it. So now I want to come back here, and then I'm going to send these back to where they were. Now you can't do, do an undo, because when you switch using the color tab, it you your undo history goes away. So you, you do have to kind of know where they're going to go. And if you're concerned, you can always look up here at the hide show autofill to see if they work out okay. If you're happy with where they are, then leave them be. If you want to be a perfectionist, put the image back into the artwork and work from it with that. And that way you can place them perfectly. I'm not going to worry about that today. I'm, I, I am a little bit more of a perfectionist. I would put the image back into it properly. But today I'm not going to worry about that because that's not part of this lesson. Okay, so let's go back. Let's get rid of our hide show autofill and let's do the other ones. We just want to make sure they're covered. So we will try heavy line first and see if they're just working right off the bat. Okay, they're working off the bat. So we'll go back to this little line here. And like I said, we're not going to see this change immediately. We are going to see it after we refresh. Okay, so that's one way of working with the threads and electric quilt. I'm going to choose my next project now. Now I, I did send this to Sketchbook and it has created a new one here, which is um, strange because usually it will say, you know, you have a copy already, but or it would just recolor this one. But for some reason it has given me a new copy, which is fine. I, I, I'm cool with that, but you know, it's all good. So next one, we'll go to this one. Of all these patterns, this these are all for the quilt part. This one is our other lesson. So as you can see, this has quite a few outlines in it, and there's a lot in here that does intersect with each other, like right here with the eyes. There's a lot going on. There's not a lot we're going to color. We're going to do the eyebrows and the eyelashes and the mouth and the nose, and that's it everything else here is shapes. But there's a few in the flowers and then the stems. They all can be colored. When you just leave them be, I mean the black shows up just fine and it's all good. But if you go to your quilt work table and you put this in on your quilt work table and let's say you have a black background, you're going to want to change these colors. The best place to change your colors is here at the quilt block work table. But it's actually easier to place thread in the quilt work table. I don't know why. <laughs> it just boggles my mind, but it is. So um, if you know you're going to be having a black background when you go to the quilt work table, you should try to change any outlines that you want that are black to another color at this point. Or you, you know, like you can go with gray or that kind of thing. Something you just know is going to show up for you. I don't know why I'm doing fabric here. Okay, so we want to work with some of the outlines here. I, I wouldn't usually change the colors here of my flowers. I'm pretty happy with them. And I'm always happy because they, they do show up in pictures and screenshots. So I really don't need to change too much of this, but I'm... I'm going to change it until I try to find a way that my other solution for this will work so that I can show you my other what else I do. So I am going to still continue to use black because in the in the quilt work table I I don't have black backgrounds. I, I purposely did pink and blue because mamas have baby boys and baby girls and so I wanted to do pink and blue. That was my logic in picking my backgrounds for this Mother's Day wall hanging. Okay, so 
let's try working on the, the outlines. I'm thinking I want to go with um, something heavy so that you can see it, but we could try, let's try doing some dots for her mouth. And maybe we'll do a red for her mouth this time and see what happens. And as you can see, that has shown up. But wow, we can't really see that they are dots until we come really close. And then we can see that they are dots. Or dashes, excuse me. I want to say dots and they're really dashes. So when you come out here, you can also see it. But just for what, whatever reason, they just didn't want to show up real well in that in the first zoom and maybe that's just because of um, the screen and that kind of thing let's see we're going to keep the nose the in black so let's change it to a black color first <laughs> then um, i'm going to keep it on the dots because i'm really liking the dashes not the dots but the dashes i'm really liking them see here we can't see them and I do think that's just because of the view but if we were to come up close we would see them and if we went back we would be able to tell that they're dashes okay so let's go ahead and do the eyebrows oh the eyebrows are not wanting to work the one of the other ways if it doesn't show up immediately Try a different part of your line. Really try to get it. Now sometimes out here, the colors will want to come out here. You could, you're thinking, oh, I, I'm just going to click out here. But because it will make the outline show up. But that's when it's most likely to pick up on your outer lines also. And if you're not wanting to color those outlines here, which is not something I recommend because it really makes your picture to look very dark um, darker than you want and it's really hard to get it to go back to this thin line you have to do that you need to turn off your styles and your weight and do it the normal way I have actually had to go back and do a reshape just take and highlight a shape and then used use my clone put it almost back into place and then delete the other one just to get it to go back to the color to me sometimes that's just faster and it could be me maybe I'm it's just me who has problem with threads I don't know okay see now I haven't even touched outlines but here one of these little doohickeys made my eyelashes go dashy on me that's not see that I, I don't like that I, you know it's not that I don't like that but that's one of the issues that we have I hadn't even touched the eyebrows yet or the eyelashes yet so this is where I'm telling you that you really do have to watch what you're doing here and that's because maybe that's because it's just within this range it's probably when I did this eyebrow it probably did these and what's funny is that we can probably come here and do these oh it doesn't want to work if I do this that's not it that's not it that's very strange I wonder what happened I wonder why I guess I colored my lips in this color in black still so <clears throat> But see these don't want to these are not wanting to change and normally I would just come and see I got so close I I clicked this now I can undo this so control Z on your keyboard or edit and undo thread brush to get it to do that so let's put our eyebrows back to black and let's see if we can get these to work. Are these going to work? These are not going to work either. So, um, and see when I click here, it clicks down here with these. Maybe that could have happened too, that they just 
you know, got done in a different color. Okay, so let's go do my, my other little trick. Now normally, like I told you, I would move these out of here. But this time I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm going to show you what else I do. I take and I draw, I redraw them. I could use any tool. I, I could use a bezier curve. I, I could use the, I, I, can't, I don't want to use the line because I need a curve. Or I can use the freehand. Now I almost always use my freehand tool when I draw stuff like this. Outlines especially because I'm not trying to close an object. So here I'm just going to draw some more eyelashes and it doesn't matter what I do to them, okay, or how I can get them in place because I'm going to leave them in here and put them down in here and then I'm going to reshape them. So I'm not too concerned about that but at this point I want to take and I want to bring these up a little higher and then I want to make a duplicate and I want to reverse or flip them so that I have one for both sides. Okay, so now I'm going to come over here and this is kind of what I was talking to you about earlier in the video when I was telling you that sometimes it's better to draw your outlines first with no shapes around that can interfere and get in the way and color your outlines first and then see you could take and you can set them outside of your your excuse me, your work area, you know, say you're just drawing out here, you could put them out here. And as you add your shapes, you can then add your outline. And as you do them, you always want to send it to front. So like if you have a shape and you know you're going to um, be drawing that shape next, then you draw your shape in place, then you go to do the outline, you just would pull the outline that you need, even if it's just a long one for you to, to reshape into place, but it's colored with your thread, then you can just take and send it to front so that it will be on top when you put it in place. Now I'm going to show you um, it will be the same thing for me when I put these in place, but instead I kind of have to work with it a bit because I'll have to send them to the back and then I'll have to send the M to the back. So you do have to think about that when the shapes are already in place and you're having to redraw your thread object. So here I should be able to color these okay. So let's try um, Let's just try brown eyelashes to see what happens. I'm going to go with the thicker effect just so you can see. And these went really well. Now this one did color first and that's kind of um, annoying but that's just because I was in this area and I'm assuming that it's going to be okay. So now that I know that they color okay, I'm going to go back to my normal one. I'm going to put the black in place really quick. because I want, I want them to be consistently the same. And as you can see, it went to the normal black. So now I'm going to take and I'm going to put these back in place. And as a little bonus to the lesson, I'll show you how to do that real quick. Okay, so I know I'm going to need these. I need to bring in all three of them. So I'm kind of, I want to try to get them into place as much as possible here, but I need to be able to get the other ones out. So I'm going to show you how I kind of work this out. This is the one I have. And so I want to, I want to, I just want to pull that out because I, I would bring my picture in. I bring my picture back anyway. So. These are obviously the ones because they're like really exaggerated. But, and I know this one was at least N to the M just a little bit. Okay. 
Okay, so now as you can see, my outlines are on the top here. And this is this is fine over here. I won't have to send the M to the back, but I do need to send it to the back over here. Now, if I were, if I thought I could, and I probably could, I could probably just choose this whole thing here and send it to the top, and that would work. Let's let's give that a try. Let's see how that works. And that worked okay, but in my outline video um, that I showed about send to front and send back, sometimes it doesn't it doesn't work. So sometimes you have to go ahead and try to send the outlines to the back first and see what happens and then go from there. So I'm going to stop with this lesson for now and move to the quilt work table because I'm already longer than I want to be. And I'm just going to briefly show you working with threads in electric quilt on the quilt work table. And we'll try, a, we'll try this same one over here and see how it does. Okay, maybe we want to use a slightly thicker thread here. As you can see, it acts like a different thread. It, it totally forgets that I had these on from the, the block work table. So you'd have to reset them again. And now I'm not going to want the dashed lines here. So I will pull these over and see about doing a heavier line here. Let's just see if that will work. And we'll refresh and see it did work because it does show up heavier. And um, let's see how this goes. No, it's not working for me. Now there are no solutions that I have over here. And normally this works great for me, so I don't get why it's giving me a hard time. And maybe it's because I'm on layer three. I'm not sure. Let's try it here. I don't know why it put me on dashed again. Okay, it's working here on the layer two for me. Maybe it's because these are motif shapes and maybe layer three doesn't see the motif shapes in that respect. Usually layer three is for working with stencils and that kind of thing or you I think you had text here. I can't really remember. Maybe maybe not. Maybe the app applique text. Yeah here it is. Applique text is here. So um, you would just take and you would As you can see, this does work really well on this table, and I'm not getting the thicker, heavy lines. I do think it caught on this one, but didn't catch on that one. We'll have to see. The really great way to figure to to see if you can't tell when you're doing this is by taking a screenshot of your your um. Oh, it restored everything. Dang. <laughs> okay. Let me put this on pause for a second. Okay, I needed to restore all my little buttons because I, I, I mean, you can come here to file and export um, image, but I, I like having my export image right here because I export images all of the time. You can see my last pattern I worked on. Just going to go straight to the desktop to do this because my desktop is right here, so... That's where I'm going. And I'm just going to put test thread project. This to me is the best way for me to tell when I've colored on this table how something's going to look. And um, because you're, you know, this is, this is, this could be what's going to help you pick your fabrics and stuff. Now as you can see, it's perfectly fine here. It's made that the heaviness here just fine. There's no heavy thread on the M's and that's what I'm looking for is to make sure there's no heavy thread on the M's. So it's good. I'm happy. So I, I hope that this will help you 
with working with threads if you should try this in electric quilt. As I said, I don't think a lot of people do outlines and color them with their threads, but I could be wrong. And maybe other people have better tips than I do or um, have an easier time of doing this. I just seem to have a hard time. So I thought I would do this as my video of the month. For electric quilt. I've, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. I'll be back next month on the 10th with a new lesson for you. Bye-bye for now.